Do you like cats? Because I bloody love them. I have one of my own and his name is Patch and I love him like he's my own son. Despite me feeling like strangling him at times. So when I found out there was going to be a video game centered around playing as a cat, I had to check it out for myself. Hey everyone, it's Jim from Nebcam Gaming and these are my thoughts on the new game Stray for the PS4, PS5 and PC. And why I think it's great. That and because cats are better than dogs. <laughs> Fight me. So Stray is one of the most unique games that I've ever played in my life, to be honest. Sure, there aren't a lot of games like this that are coming out. I mean, where you could have a simple vibe kind of game, where you can get home from a holiday's work and you can just pop it on and enjoy yourself. There's not many games that come out like that now. Most games that come out now are pretty much like grind around a big open world for 30 odd hours or 200 hours if you're playing something like Elden Ring. And weirdly enough, I just finished playing Spirit of the North where you play as a fox. So when I found that this game was a thing, I was like, what is better than playing as a fox? playing as a cat. And in my opinion, Stray is a great game. Not perfect, there are some things that I could pick at, but I don't really feel like mentioning those all that much because they're so tiny and insignificant, it really doesn't matter. But it's mostly just fun, you know, it's a fun, relaxing game. Stick it on if you fancy having a good time, something that's just chilled out, you know, vibing kind of aesthetic around it. Something, something which you just want to turn your brain off, go through the motions. Stray is that kind of game for you. So the story of Stray is about a little ginger cat who gets separated from his family by falling down a huge gap that leads into this lost city inhabited by robots, where the cat then befriends a little drone named B12 and together you embark on a journey through slug light cities, neon light rooftops, sewers, back street alleyways and so much more. And what I really think makes Stray unique is just the fact that you get to play as a cat, but also the fact that you could easily follow the story if you wanted to and learn about the small amounts of lore that you can find out about this robot city. While it's nothing groundbreaking, it's just really interesting when you stumble across bits and pieces of lore here and there, you can unlock memories, speak to the inhabitants and learn more about them. Each and every robot has like a distinct personality. They've all they all feel some kind of loss or despair being trapped down in this city with the roof sealed. It's really interesting stuff. Or you could just do what cats do and pretty much don't give a shit about anything and run around the city sleeping where you like, jumping on surfaces and knocking shit off the shelves like a cunt, scratching random civilians carpet and overall just being a cat. You know. A bit of a twat at times. I mean, I definitely had my fair share of like cat arsehole moments in this game. Then it occurred to me, hang on a minute, I'm a cat, right? So I can be an arsehole if I wanted to. I want to put myself in the shoes of a cat and think, you know what? When you're a cat and you're an arsehole, you pretty much get away with everything. That feels amazing. Imagine if I could do that in real life at work. And so I decided to be an absolute twat. I thought about every single person that ever did me wrong in my life and I went on a rampage. I scratched this guy's carpet because I could. I knocked over this person's stuff because I wanted to. This guy provided useless information to me so I knocked over the stuff on his shelves just to spite the bastard. I tripped this guy over because it was funny and then decided to phase through him with a new Jedi Force pair of Disney made up. Being a twat was kind of fun but then there's only so much of that I could take before wanting to crack on with the story. So I guess I'm nice again. <laughs> for now. So the question is, do you be an arsehole or do you play the actual story? You could do both, which is what I did. I played for the main story and while I didn't do absolutely everything, I didn't unlock every little thing or explore every single part of the city, I still had a blast playing straight. It is a very short game, I think it could have benefited from a bit more content, but for what we do have here, it is really good. If they were to make a sequel in future, I hope this is a little bit more, like a bit of a longer game, but obviously the length is not that much of an issue to me. For one, the cat controls really well. It's very basic in its control scheme, but it's really damn fun. You're limited down to jumping with the X button if you're playing on PlayStation and either running or scratching some poor fucker's carpet with the back triggers. But the R2 trigger really feels good to use as a sprint button when you need to get away from the Zergs, which are these like mutated creatures which are down below in the sewers, the reason why there's a roof over the city in the first place. And the cat's agility is so smooth and fluid you can find yourself outsmarting the Zergs when cutting corners and maneuvering around them, like tricking them into getting trapped in cages, etc, stuff like that. And the same goes for later on in the game where you encounter these robot sentinels in probably my favourite level in the whole entire game. During this prison break level, tension is really high. You're looking for your prison friends, B12 and a robot named Clementine. I feel sad now. And the stealth though not being the absolute best thing in the world, it's still really damn fun. The cat can use its speed to get away from the searchlights, hide in boxes or traverse parts of the level to outwit the sentinels, also get them trapped in cages. It's so much fucking fun. And what I think the developers really really nailed here is the cat's movement. They don't go overboard and give the cat like exaggerated movements, there's now customization feature, there's now upgrade features or stuff that you can get to make yourself more powerful or faster. You are simply just an ordinary cat. The only upgrade you really get is a weapon that you can use against the Zergs, but it's only really used for one specific part of the game, and then never again, so it kind of benefits that particular part of the game, and didn't overstay its welcome. And I like games that do that, they introduce one mechanic for like one specific section of the game, use it just enough, and then move on to something else. Because I can't tell you how much less impactful and intense the chase and stealth sequences would have been if this mechanic was still around, if you were still able to use this weapon, and 
and being in those certain circumstances, it will feel so much less impactful. And when I say the movements of the cat are spot on, what I mean by that is that this game nails the distinct details of how a cat would move. The environment itself, the level design, is designed to benefit this sort of style. When you're jumping from ledge to ledge, the cat will do a little animation where it arches its back slightly, ready to position itself for a jump. Very similar to how actual cats move. There's no double jump feature or anything like that, it's just basic jumping from ledge to ledge when a button icon appears near a specific platform. You may think that that could get boring after a while, but it's the fact that the very environment around you is built to withstand this kind of gameplay is what makes it a lot of fun and very charming. But I think most of Stray's uniqueness comes from its exploration elements. This city is beautiful and you can find yourself wasting a lot of time just running around. Sometimes not even running, but just walking so you can take in your surroundings and see what's going on around you. The amount of detail put into these environments must have took a lot of work and I have to commend the developers for this because Stray is probably one of the most visually stunning games that I've played in a very long time. Exploration in this game is not just about looking at pretty neon lights. Sometimes you just run around the city and since with mouse games you're used to playing as like a human or something quite tall or something like that, you sometimes forget that you're a cat. There's parts of the environment which only something of your size can fit through, so sometimes you're just casually cruising through the city looking to ruin someone's day by scratching their carpet or ruining their board game and you'll find tiny openings like vents or small gaps which the game allows you to travel through because you're a cat. So the developers not only took into account when creating the level design around the cat's movements but also its size. So Stray pretty much has everything that I really like in video games. Beautiful visuals, very adaptive level design, beautifully told story, exploration which isn't restrictive, and Jedi Force powers. But before I wrap this video up, I want to talk about the ending of Stray. So again, since this is a spoiler talk, if you haven't played Stray, you won't be watching this video now anyway, but definitely click off now if you don't want the main story room for you, especially the ending. In the final section of the game, the cat and B12 make their way into the central computer room, and after finally figuring out how to open the main door to the city, disabling all the computers, unfortunately, B12 short circuits and dies. This broke my fragile heart, and after some heartfelt dialogue, we just see the cat lie down next to B12's lifeless body and just go to sleep next to him. This was very emotional to see because it just reminds me of the way a patch will just jump on my lap sometimes, curl up on me and go to sleep on my chest, and I could just feel the emotion of that scene. This cat, this non-dialogue character, really has a lot of heart to him. And in the final moments of this game, the main doors to the upside city open. I didn't want to put this game down. I knew it was coming to an end. I wanted to play more. So I just slowly walked up the final flight of stairs, and even slightly before then, I turned around and took one last look at B12 before I continued. I slowly strolled up the stairs, taking in every last bit of this game that I could. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Stray. So overall, Stray was a really good, feel-good game, and I really enjoyed the four or five hours that I spent with it. I think even if you don't like cats, you can get a kick out of this game. Plus, there's a Back to the Future reference that had me laughing till I died. I implore you all not to sleep on Stray. The cat in this game needs to go up on the Hall of Fame of iconic video game characters. I mean, can you imagine if there was like a list of characters uh, from video games all over history, and you could see this cat up there with characters like Mario, Kratos... Link, Nathan Drake even, that'll be awesome. So that's my review of Stray. As always, thank you very much for watching, if you've made it to the end. Please consider giving it a subscribe, a like, that would really, really help, I really appreciate that. All links to our socials and all that good stuff down below. I've been Jim, and have a fantastic day.